Welcome back to another video. Don't click away, wait, right? If you are an eighth grader, uh, this video is for you, but it can also be for seventh grade, high school, all this. This is right here gonna be some test prep, right? Teachers, if you wanna show this to your students to help them out, by all means, all right? So this is going to be a type of question that you will see that is kind of a priority standard on the state testing, uh, which is what happens when you get scatter plot. A scatter plot is a fun fact, basically when you have all these little tiny dots, do -do 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 Right, and you have a line of best fit that goes through it. Keep in mind, line of best fit does not mean perfect line. It's the line that just best fits that. And the problem is going to ask you to find the y-intercept, the approximate y-intercept, keep that in mind, and the slope. And again, approximate slope the best you can. All right, the reason they put an approximate is just because you can't look at a graph and know for exact certain, so they want you this close. But we're gonna show you today, I'm gonna show you how you can find these two things easily. So stick with me, let's get Tommy. Tommy! What do you want? <laughs> you all right? Oh yeah, I'm good, good. Wait, what's this? Ah, this is a... Uh, Basically, we're going to be finding information on these graphs. We're going to look at two problems, and I'm going to show you some tricks, and hopefully you'll figure them out. First thing you have to do, guys, is you got to look at the graph. All right, so first thing we're going to do, Tommy, is we're going to look at this graph, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the X and the Y of this graph and see what they're counting by, okay? How are they counting? This is really important, and a lot of people miss this. So notice it's counting by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? Those middle lines are showing. This one, the Y's are counting a little bit different. Do you notice how those are counting? Oh, man. Uh, 40? It is counting by 40. You're right. Look, there's 40, and there's 120, right? And there is 200, right? So you just got to figure those lines out. If you can figure out those graphing lines and what they are, you're on the right track. So that's your first step, right? Figure out how the graph is counting or how it is labeled is another way to put it. Okay, what's it counting by? Then, the first thing it's going to ask you is find the y-intercept, but it's going to say approximate y-intercept. Remember, that's where this crosses the y-axis. Now, my advice to you, okay, don't just say like, oh, it looks like it crosses right there. Now, it probably does, okay, but it's going to be tricky at times, and I'll show you where it can be tricky. Uh, it's best if you actually just solve it. So to solve it, they do this on purpose, just to throw you off. To solve it, first you should find the slope. So what's the second thing you should do? The second thing you should always do, Tommy, is find the slope. Do it. Do it. Do it. Exactly. Do you remember the formula? Y2 minus Y1. Good. Y2 minus Y1, and I'll do the rest over X2 minus X1. But you're wondering, what? where do we get those, right? Yeah. Nah, and this is where you have to look on the graph, okay? So we're going to find slope. By doing that, we're going to look for some points. It's pretty easy. We need to find points. If you look carefully at the graph, you want to find points that cross almost perfectly between two points lines okay so you notice this guy right here it kind of crosses perfectly between 240 and 4 all right so we want one how many points did i say we, we want oh uh, we need two good and if you look carefully this one right here looks like it crosses perfectly again it's not going to be perfect but that's okay so then we're going to write those down our x first i'm going to start with this point so i'm going to go over this is at eight and remember that's why we wrote those numbers down 120 so i have one point is 8 120 now I go to my other point and that's four two forty. What'd you say? Two forty. Oh, it's two forty. Sorry. And and uh, four two forty. All right. From there, it's basic math, Tommy. And this is where it just gets some problem solving. So this is where you need to figure out which ones. Okay. Remember, all points are x and y, right? All points are x and y. But for the sake of slope and finding slope, we're just gonna since we have two points, we're gonna label one of our points the first point and one the second point. That's where this 2 and 1 come from. So this is x1 and y1, and this is x2 and y2. All that means is that's my second points, x and y, and my first points, x and y's. All right? So we're going to solve it. So 2, 40. That's a terrible 4. Yeah, geez, oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Yeah, thanks, Tommy. Minus my 120. And don't be afraid, guys. If you need to pause this video, slow it down, problem solve yourself, it's a good idea. Just sitting and watching sometimes isn't helpful. Okay, so 4... Take away eight. Ooh. All right. So notice, Tommy, I got 240 take away 120 is 120. And four take away eight, super important, is what? 
a negative. It is a negative. You're right. So it's a negative 4. All right? Now when you do division, you'll find that this answer is going to end up being negative 30. Okay? How'd you do that? I just did division. So negative 30. So that means my slope is negative 30. All right? Beautiful. Done. Look at that. We already found our slope. Okay, so now, after you find your slope, you find your y-intercept, okay? And to do that, what you need to do, you with me? Yeah, go ahead. What you need to do is you need to plug it into your y equals mx plus b. Remember this guy? Yeah. That's called the slope-intercept form, all right? My slope being negative 30. So I'm going to plug in the m, being slope, negative 30, x plus b. Now what? Uh, I don't know. Ah, this is what we need to remember. So to find the y-intercept you need to use one of the pairs of ordered pairs. All right, so pick one. Which one do you want to use? Uh, 8 and 120. Okay, 8 and 120. So now I know this is x and y. I thought you said it was x1 and y1. Oh, it's not x1 and y1. It was only x1 and y1 when we had to use it for this. Now, remember, I told you all points are just x, y. So I'm going to plug in my x's and my y's. Y is 120, and x is 8. And then I just solve for b. So what's negative 30 times 8? That's negative 240. Remember, I solve for b. i got to get b by itself. So I'm going to add 240 to both sides. And you end up getting 360. So your b, or your y-intercept, is 360, which we said it was probably that, but you just didn't want to guess. And that's where it crosses the y-intercept. Bam! That's how you do that, Tommy. Oh, man, okay, hang on. So, uh... You want to do another one? Yeah. Okay, let's erase this, but we'll leave up my steps because those are important. Stick with me because I'm going to show you kind of something tricky that will sometimes happen. There is no convenient way to erase this. Do you notice that? Yeah, it's kind of takes forever. Oh, my goodness, forever. Oh, that's like a lot. Oh, forever. Got it. Good. Okay, thanks. All right, so we're going to look at another one. We're going to look at one like this. Oh, no, no, oh, oh. That's all right. It's because I had the points from the last one. All right, so you'll notice this one, it does look like it kind of crosses at 30, but if you look closely, it looks like it's right above 30. Don't forget, if you need to pause, you can, all right? But we're going to go through this problem and be done. So check it out, Tommy. First thing we need is look at the graph and see how it's counting. What does it look like it's counting by? I don't know. Uh, fives? Fives. The X's are counting by fives? Good. Well, you're, I think you're right. Right? Counting by fives? Uh, this one looks like it's counting by fives as well. Oh, that's convenient. Yeah. All right, so now what do we do next? Oh, we do the slope. Good, by finding those points. So let's look at the points here. So there's a point, looks like here, right? And maybe another one way up here. Right, that one looks like it crosses. Now, man, mind you, you can find any. It looks like you can see one there and there. As long as it looks like it crosses directly between two boxes. Oh, okay. Okay, so let's write this one down. This one looks like 10... 35, all right, and this one looks like 50, 55, all right, and then we just pick a point, we'll make this one 1, this one 2, right, yeah, and I always label it, it just helps me out, x1, y1, x2, y2, and you solve, formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay, you're so, you're awesome, settle down, spaz, all right, so 55, take away, 35? Oh, yeah, 35. You're right. Uh, and then 50, take away 10, and that gets me 20 over 40, right? Yeah. And that's a half. So my slope, which I found, is one half. Perfect. Do you remember what I do next? Yeah. You need to do the uh, equation. Good. Do the equation. I've got to find the y-intercept now. So y equals mx plus b, right, where half is my slope. So y equals one-half x plus b. Then what? Oh, yeah, this is use, use one of the, yeah, yeah, use, yeah, yeah. What? Use one of the, the you know. Use one of the pairs? Yeah, those. <laughs> okay, use one of the pairs, gotcha. So I'm going to pick one, I'll make 10, and, uh, let's do 10 and 35. So this is 35 is equal to 1 half times 10 plus B, then what? Solve, just do it, just solve, just do it, do it. Do it, all right, do it. So 1 half to 10 is 5. So that's 5. Remember, i got to get b by itself. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. And you're going to get 30 equals b. And if you look, oh good, it did cross at 30. So that means our y-intercept is 30. What do you think of those? I think it's, you know, pretty easy. If you follow those steps, trust me, guys, 
You'll figure it out. You'll have it. All right. Curveballs will be when it ends up in the middle and you don't know where it's at. So use this process and you will do great on the test. Yeah, you will. Yeah.